Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. And um, if it's the first time you're passing through, please like, subscribe and share. Um, for all my existing subscribers, thank you very much. Thank you for your support, your comments and everything else you do. Write to me sometimes. But yeah, I wanted to talk about um, the immigration detention centres, which really... I don't know, it grieves me somewhat because, you know, they're treated so abominably in there. And apparently, I think I said in a previous video that um, somebody went up undercover. I think it was BBC. They went undercover. I think it was a panorama program. Um, I think they went into Brook um, Detention Centre and they found how uh, how the... Um, Detainees were being assaulted, mimicked, humiliated, beaten, and all sorts. And for some reason, the Home Office believed that they could get away with it. And so when, um, I think, I don't know who brought a charge against them, but they were saying, oh, it's too expensive for them to have a court hearing and the um, staff shouldn't have to give evidence and all that kind of stuff. But I'm so glad the Court of Appeal has ruled, has overturned the Home Office and have said it's going to go into an open hearing. They are going to investigate um, the behaviour in in those um, immigration centres. They'll probably focus on the ones that were reported and um, I don't know what's going to happen. But Home Office wasn't available for comment. I can understand why. They reckon that they, you know, G4S Security reckon that they've overhauled their management. They've done training and goodness knows what. But we hear so many things about those poor people in detention centres. And remember, they're not all guilty. Some of them just haven't had their applications completed. So it's no point saying they deserve it. And the thing is, is what I don't understand, is that they keep them in these detention centres for sometimes up to 80, uh, no, no, from 18 months to five years. And I was wondering if, if they want to get rid of net migration, if they're illegal immigrants, why don't they deport them and save us money? Apparently, if you deport all of those people, you save 35 million but you know why they don't want to deport them? Because every day they are in that detention centre, it costs £100. So they're making money on it. So whether foreigners are working legally or they're illegal, they still make money from them. And that's why they don't want to let them out. Apparently they're pressing for a 28 limit. 28 day limit for them to be in um, the detention centres. The UK is the only country out of the EU that doesn't have an upper limit. All of the other countries have an upper limit. They, they sh you shouldn't be able to keep people in detention indefinitely. And that's what's happening. Not only, the thing is, is that if they're in detention centres, it's supposed to be a pathway to deportation. So either they're in there because they're eligible for deportation. They're not. One man was in there for 18 months. And then finally he got his leave to remain in a detention centre for 18 months. He nearly committed suicide. That's how bad it is. They have Yarlswood, which is the woman's, um, the woman's one near Gatwick. Apparently 45 people have tried to have self-harmed. Some are pregnant. You know, I just don't understand, you know, putting people in detention centres and not deporting them. Surely it can't take that long. I mean, they've illegally deported so many. Why can't they illegally deport a few more and save the money and save the staff and save everything? It also gives those people in, the, in those detention centres a little peace of mind. Because unlike the prison, when you know you're going to be released, a detention centre, you do not know when you're going to be released. And like I said, some people are in there indefinitely, 18 months, two years, some, this Ethiopian guy, or was it Ethiopian or Zimbabwe? Five years he was in there. 
You know, what are they doing in there? And then they're privately run. So it's costing us an arm and a leg. And I'm sure it's our taxpayers' money that's paying for it. So, you know, one guy was begging. He said, please, he'd been in there for 18 months. I'm going to sit, put the links, begging, please let me go. Please let him deport me. Please send me back to Ethiopia. And I don't know why they're not deporting them. I don't understand what they're keeping them in for. But like I said, the only incentive must be the money. They get a grant, I assume, or they get money from somewhere. And then they just um, keep them there in order to keep the funds coming in. I hear Boris Johnson has is um, opening up a new prison in um, Yorkshire. I think, where's the place in Yorkshire? A new 10,000. Um, it's going to cater for 10,000 by 2020 and move um, more prison places. And he's going to extend the stop and search to 42 counties now. So I think it was just um, metro. I think it was just the metropolitan area. Now it's been extended to forty-two and less um, oversight for the stop and search. That means the police do not have to report it to their um, superiors. They don't have to seek. In, um, they don't have to seek p permission or redress. They can do whatever they like, more or less. That's what they're saying. They're saying they're being tough on crime, but they're not taking into account that we have some corrupt officers. You know, you, you know, they're just looking at it from one side. Yes, there's crime, but there should be some kind of investigation process. And that metadata is missing. That part of the process which investigates um the crime, who's done it, you know, to see whether or not the evidence fits, that's missing. It's straight from the street to the prison. There's no, um, and unless you've got money for a lawyer, there's no in between. So, you know, I'm, I'm all for cracking down on criminals, but make sure the criminals are criminals. And not people, not instant, not innocent bystanders. Um, yeah, it's going to cost them 2.5 billion to build this new prison in Sutton in Yorkshire. Apparently, they're supposed to be making it. Um, they're supposed to be building it next to another big prison, and then they want to um, combine Harm Harmonsworth Prison with Coldbrook Prison. Apparently the two most biggest prisons, but one is a, I think one is a mass, what do they call it, mass security or something? Something security. Anyway, you know where they put the really, really serious criminals. One is one of those. And they're going to bring out 20,000 more police. I mean, anybody would think that this place is running with criminals. I mean, please. You know, for the, the amount of money they're putting into it, it's not really about criminals, you know. It's not about criminals at all. It's about immigrants. That's my belief. Because the only way they would want so many police and so many, um, and create 10,000 more spaces in prisons, is to put more immigrants in, because that kind of fits in with the immigrant numbers to me. So I don't know what's going on. I just feel a bit concerned. I feel concerned whether or not there's going to be fair practice, fair play, um, due process. That's my concern. You know, do whatever you want, but do it properly. Um, the new prison will be built alongside the maximum security jail. That's what I was looking for uh, at HMP Full in Sutton. I'm surprised that people in Sutton are allowing it. Maybe it's in the middle of nowhere. Violent or sexual offenders are coming out long before they should implies that they're, yeah. But apparently Boris is saying that violent or sexual offenders are coming out long before they should, they should be because there's not enough space. So they reckon they're freeing them early, but uh, that's hard to believe. I mean, if you've got a sentence, you've got a sentence, honestly. Sometimes they release them early on good behaviour, but, you know, that's got nothing to do with them not having insufficient spaces. So, 
and they reckon criminals must be afraid and not the public. That's fine, but to me, like I said, get the right bloody criminals. Ah, oh dear. Yeah, that's what I said. I put we need more investigations into the arrests. The stop and search has been extended, extended across 42 um, counties. Low threshold for its use. Do not have to speak to a senior officer. Black people are 9.5 times more likely to be stopped and searched. And those are old figures. It's supposed to be more than that. A gap which has grown. And so that is my concern. Honestly, peeps, you know, I am not an antagonist. I, you know, I'm I'm looking for a fair, just world. I know I know the world can never be fair and just, but as much as possible. And I just think, you know, in a corrupt society or in a place where people are corrupt, I should say, you know, it's hard to digest that all these um, systems are being in place when the people are putting them in place have got no idea what's happening on the streets. They just take it in good faith that everybody, you know, all their government's office officials are are well behaved and, you know, unless it's reported, they don't even question it. And that's what concerns me. Um, UK detention centres are worse than prison. So the Home Office appeal is overturned. The state decides who has the right to live in the country and who doesn't, hence the detention centres. But well, that's what I mean. It's fine. Decide who has the right to live in the country and who doesn't. So apparently there's 28,000 people, more than 28,000 in detention centres. Why don't you deport their butts? Because, half, I mean, I bet you more than half are not supposed to be in there. Otherwise, why aren't you deporting them? And saving that money, saving space. You shouldn't have to be building bigger prisons. You shouldn't have to be building bigger prisons. You get rid of the ones that are in there, send them back to where you, they're supposed to be going and make space for any new ones you find. You know, when... The cap doesn't fit. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. It really doesn't add up. Apparently, yours was secretive immigration centre. I took that somewhere. I don't know why it's secretive. I think that's probably the one where you know they blindfold them. But I think they blindfold them. Most of them, so they don't know where they're going or where this place is until they reach. Apparently, none of them know where they're going. One guy, he went to his probation officer, he signs on as usual, they carted him off. That's the last thing, he hadn't said goodbye to his family, his family wouldn't know where they are. I'm surprised that more people don't report people going missing, not unless they do show that they're going missing, but we don't hear about it. Because the way that they cart these people off to detention centres... Unless they inform the families shortly afterwards, I'm surprised that people don't wonder where the, all these people are. <sighs> um, I was watching one of these, um, you know, the Yarlswood. Apparently there were men look, going in while women were showering and making lewd comments about their breasts and everything, watching them while they're showering. And apparently because it was caught on camera, um, you know, some discipline has been done or they've been suspended. But Christ, you need to be checking on your staff if you care. But the problem is they don't care. They've got people in there. It's cheap labour. I hear they don't get that much. I think they get about 14,000, which is peanuts. So you've probably got people, and they say they're not properly trained, some of them. So you've got people who are probably young, not properly trained, who just think they're going in there to have a party and take fun of the immigrants or those who they believe are illegal so they feel as though they can do what they want with them. Um, there's eight detention centres in the UK, one in Scotland. They sh they're designed to affect removal, but people have been detained for years in definite detention. There's no upper limit for detention. They have been asked to leave you know, detainees have asked to leave and said they'll even pay for their ticket 
and they're not allowing them out. They're not allowing them to leave. So what's that about? You know, if these people are willing to pay their way to go back to their country, why won't they let them go? What is the problem? There's something very sinister going on here. And I can believe it, it, okay, it has to be money related. It has to be doing be done with how much they get. They get paid a hundred pounds a day for every single. Um, I think it's a hundred pound a day for every detainee, something like that. Um, it's, I read it somewhere, but you know, I mean, if they that's their incentive to keep it going, to keep that system going, because if they weren't being paid anything, they'd probably ship them back. Mighty intends to create a super detention center. Mighty is, I think, Mighty is the one that runs Yarlswood. Now they got so bloody greedy, they want they're creating a super detention center. They're merging Harmonsworth with Colnbrook. You can imagine. And Harmonsworth is one of the biggest. That's got six hundred. Um, males in it at the moment. I don't know how much cold book has got in it. But can you imagine a super detention centre? So they're making a business out of it. Um, what else? Um, um, they've got a 180 million contract for this. 180 million. Just to abuse people. Just to, you know, literally, you've got a building, you're not doing much with them. You know, you're giving them something to eat, and that's it. 180 million contract. Ah, it's worse than prison. If you are in prison, you know when you're getting out in a detention centre. You don't know when you're get, going to get out. Causing stress, uncertainty. It takes its psychological toll. Uncertainty about status, separation from family and friends. People have committed suicide, mental health outcomes. It's a, um, detention centres are category B. Um, apparently they go in and they count all the people. Um, they count each individual as they um, wake up. One woman says she feels like an animal. They just go around counting. There's no human element. Um, Self-harm increased to 74 in 2015. They're not even allowed visitors. At least in prison, you're allowed visitors. These people are in there for months and they're not allowed visitors. Some are in solitary confinement. And then they have a place called the Kingfisher Unit where they put people to cool off if they've lost their temper or if something's gone wrong. Godness knows what they do in there. Overstayers are kept in the same room with um, convicted violent criminals. The Home Office policy to reduce the detention of vulnerable adults, but vulnerable adults are still routinely locked up. There's apparently, there's supposed to be this private G4S healthcare. Um, this lady was talking about, you know, they have some health kind of service in the detention centres. But they reckon one of the ladies was saying that the healthcare assistants treat you with some scepticism. They believe that you're just making things up. You're just trying to get a lenient time. You're just pretending you just want to get out and all of that. So they don't believe half the time. One pregnant woman, she was bleeding and they, they, they told her to wait for this and wait for that. In the end, she lost the baby. In all honesty, that's probably the best thing that happened. Um, I know, you know, it's hard, but when you think bringing up a baby in prison and in that kind of environment, it can't be good. And she's still in there, not deported, not taken out of the detention centre. Apparently, um, I didn't even know this. I, I've heard of them locking up children in the United States. I did not know they locked up children in the UK. But apparently 1,000 children are locked up. And pregnant women. Well, I know about the pregnant women, but I didn't know a thousand children. I don't know who are these children. It didn't give me much information, but I have got all the links below. Home Office is not making any attempt to find out what their experiences are. So when all these people come into, like I said, they go from the street 
straight into the detention centre. There's no assessment made of the individuals. Um, some, some some guy had epileptic fit. They didn't even know how. They weren't even trained for things like that. That's what I mean. These people aren't trained for medical needs. People in there with hypertension, without medication. And, you know, they're not trained. And they're left in there. And then when it's too, too serious, then they call an ambulance. Because I guess they don't want them to die on their hands or something. Or, you know, but the thing is, is that they're so sceptical. that When people are claiming that they're in pain or not well, they think that they're putting it on. And they've got no way, quick way of determining whether somebody is genuinely not well. Uh, 24,748 people detained under Immigration Detained um, Act. In, detained under the Immigration Powers Act 2018. Oh dear, I don't want to go on, but I, you know, I just think um, apparently when somebody's sick or somebody's not well, it's on the onus of the victim, not the Home Office, to let them know what's wrong. One person told her story, um, but they still didn't believe her. Apparently there's a Rule 35 report is an examination by the doctor to take account of a history of abuse and trauma, physical and psychological consequences. And apparently this woman reported that she'd been abused. And even though she had 35 burn marks on her bodies and her, she had all these scars, the, they didn't even import the seriousness of what had gone through and they still detained her. So, you know, what is the point of having a Rule 35 if it's not abided by? Um, there's no treatment for hypertension, tubular chlorosis, cigarette burns, staff badly trained, badly managed and detainees suffer. Discriminated against gender identity, sexual identity, officers abuse power. Um, the detainees are put to work and are paid one pound an hour. So they get seven pound a day, 35 pound a week. Court of Appeal have overruled the Home Office's claim that investigating the cruelty in detention centres would be too expensive. The Home Office lost their appeal. They claimed it would be too expensive to investigate officers who had seriously abused, assaulted, mocked and humiliated detainees and that staff should not be required to give evidence. Um, but the Court of Appeal rejected the government's view that holding a public inquiry would be too expensive and staff should be compelled to give evidence. And that is going ahead, thank God. You know, I don't know how long it's going to take, but in the meantime, hopefully people will, you know, it'll help um, with the other, um, what do you call it, centres to try and um, not be so severe with the detainees. Because if they think they can't get away with it, I mean, you're not supposed to bring cameras in, but they had somebody undercover in there. I don't know how they got in, and I don't know how they managed to film it all, but it was all filmed and on Panorama in 2017. Um, UK is on the edge of implementing a 28-day limitation on detention, which would save 35 million. And this has been going on since 2018. We're no, far, we're no further forward because apparently it, 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 um, the Home Office, what did they say? Oh, well, they reckon that um, it has an implication on immigration. But the fact of the matter is, is that, like I said, it has to be money why they don't want to do the 28-day rule. Because 28 days, do what you have to do in 28 days. Either the um, immigra immigrants are going to appeal or they're not. If they don't appeal 28 days, you ship them out. Let them go back with some, well, not even with dignity because they're going to be in chains, but at least they'll be free. Um, the Home Office has noted the judgment and is now considering the next steps. Um, for me, the first step should be to end the G4S security contract. And there should be rules to treat detainees like human beings. That's my thought. Immigrants are treated as though they have no rights because they're not technically criminals, but they're locked up. G4S claim that they have made changes to training, staffing and management. Yeah, right. Worried about losing their contract, maybe. Human rights activist Antonia Bright said that an open inquiry is just the beginning of detention abuse. 
I'm relieved anyway about that. It's bad enough being locked up, the good, the bad and the ugly together, let alone to be abused, mocked and humiliated. There's no due process. Immigration is administrative. You're locked up for an offence. You, if he was locked up for an offence, he would have more rights. In other words, if he was in prison, he'd be better off. Um, she called it scapegoating of immigrants. Um, it's not a criminal trial, but staff will need to give evidence. There has been staff dismissed from Brooke House. Um, and UK is the only country in the UK that does not have an upper limit. I think I've nearly finished now. Serco and G4S are privately run. Those are the two people that run the detention centre, two companies. Um, people who have a legal right to be here, even EEA nationals are being locked up. Um, apparently, they, they are saying the argument is the need to control our borders and put a cap on immigration and detention centres are a part of this. Then if that is the case, send them back to where they came from. If you want to control borders and put a cap on immigration, send those 24,000 immigrants you've got locked up in detention centres back to where they came from. And some of them are willing to pay for their own bloody uh, flight. So why don't you allow them to do that? Like I said, you know, they call them expatriates in other countries. You know, all those people from England who lived in other countries are called expatriates. Over here, they're called foreign criminals, foreigners, goodness knows what other um, economic migrants, whatever term they choose to use. Why aren't they? Or why aren't we? Not well, not, not me. But why aren't they called expatriates? I guess they could acquire that title if they wanted to, though. I guess people just take the title that they're given. I think we should all demand to be expatriates. <laughs> anyway, this is not a laughing matter. A uh, community-based approach to immigration in Sweden, instead of banging people up in a detention centre, they work with them in, in the community and during the time um, while the case is being considered. And then while the case is being considered, they're doing stuff in the community. And then if they're due to be deported, they deport them. And I'm not quite sure what they do with them if... Um, I guess if they're innocent or if they're legal, they send them back into the community. But at least with those, they're out in the community anyway. It's more effective and humanitarian. One man spent nine months in a detention centre and is now being given his indefinite leave to remain. His story didn't change from the time, moment he went into that detention centre until the time he left. His story didn't change. And yet he was banged up in a detention centre for nine months. Yes, detention centres are definitely worse than prisons. And that's all for now. Sorry I went on for so long.